Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. I'm going to be braising some breast of lamb, so this is like a techniques video. Still gorgeous though. Today I'm going to use a very underused cut of meat. This is lamb. This is the breast of lamb. So it's sort of around, I think, around there. Think like pork belly, but it obviously doesn't get as big and as fatty as pork belly because obviously the pigs are older, they grow up, they grow to an older age and uh, they get bigger, they develop more fat. But um, if you like lamb and you haven't had this, you're going to love this. If you don't like lamb, well, you may never like this, but I reckon I reckon it's worth giving it a try because um, we're going to slow cook it. I'm going to braise it in the oven. Got an arrangement of flavours here that are going to make it all more yummier. And uh, anyway, I can't wait to get cracking on this, and um, I hope you really enjoy this one. All right, so this is just getting some flavours ready for this lamb. This is a techniques video rather than a specific recipe. So I mean, by all means, add and remove whatever you want from mine and uh yeah fill your boots basically but i think rosemary and garlic and lamb you know it just works so rosemary and garlic all chopped up i had a look in my fridge so that's what we're doing nowadays using stuff up and i've still got my confit lemon or preserved lemon if you don't have this why would you um and you want some lemon in there i'll just use lemon zest maybe a whole one but this has got a sort of a, a sort of more salty edge to it. And that bit you can see on the side of the knife that might be irritating you. I did find that afterwards. I did chop that up. This is this lamb, you're just about to see me get that ready now. Um, this has come like this. It boned and rolled already. And it's actually two pieces. Some places, some butchers will serve it on the bone as well, on the rib, so you can, you know, you cook it completely differently then. Um, I, I'm opening this up because I want to just have a look inside. I want to get these flavours in there, and yet it's two little pieces stacked on. But that that could have been ready as it was. You could just roast that if you like, as it is. You can see the fat in there, and I'm debating for a second. Do I leave that on? Then I think, yeah, I want to leave it on. I want it to melt as it's cooking. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of mustard in mine. So really, I what I should have done. And if you're gonna do it. Brush the mustard on first. It makes more sense. The salt and pepper will stick to it better. And you can see where the ribs would have been on this. Um, so another name for breast of lamb. I just learnt uh, mutton flaps. Yep. And those of you with a mind like mine, I mean, you just, yeah, it's irresistible, isn't it, to just come up with some crude comment. But I'm not going to. I'm going to rise above it. Mutton flaps. <laughs> anyway, um, sprinkling over. These lovely seasonings and flavourings. So go with this lamb, get it all on there. I'm also going to add some anchovy. This, this would be the ones that normally come in little tins. Very, very salty ones. They disappear pretty much as they cook. They melt and they just, they just add a lovely another layer, sort of salty seasoning that goes inside the lamb. Feel free to not use those, but they are really lovely. Once I've got, I've got three on one, I put a couple on the other ones, and then I put one in me, because I love them. So I've decided I'm going to present mine as it was. So I'm going to roll it up, I just turn it round, I realise it's not very easy for you to see what I'm doing there. So let's just roll it up, and that delightful squelch is either is really nice to your ears or, uh, or disgusting. No judgement. I want to tie this up now, so... You'll see at the end of this, I'm clearly not a butcher, but I, I managed to get it to work. So I'm taking about something like two meters, just over a couple of yards of string, and I'm tied one knot around it. And then what I do here is I make like a lasso. Now feel free to just cut individual pieces of string and tie them up around it. It doesn't really matter as long as you've got it secure. But this is a technique that I learned many years ago. And I thought, yeah, I've never really, managed to make it look professional but I still like to do it so as you pull that tight 
that's secure, that's secure now. So I'll show you again. Wrap it around your wrist a couple of times and then lasso that over the lamp to the next point where you want to tie it. And then as you pull that, that should stay reasonably where you left it. I got obviously I'm getting no awards from butchers watching this, you know, give me a break guys. I'm a chef, not a butcher. Three times this time round my wrist. So that will be a self sealing knot. That'll be completely where it, when I finish tightening that, that's not moving. I don't have to then fiddle around and try to sort of finish off with a double reef knot or anything. That's done. That is secure. So just snip off the extra bits. And yeah, yeah, looks like a dog's dinner, but you know, I've done it. It's it's well tidied up, lovely. So braising stuff to go with it. Uh, onions. I wanted to keep this quite simple, really. I haven't put loads of vegetables with this. I'm cutting those onions though quite chunky. And yeah, I wouldn't normally uh, try to fry and brown meat in a saucepan. Uh, I wanted to use that Dutch oven you see behind it, but I had another use for it. So once I've got that lamb. Nicely seared all the way around. What I should do there is actually maybe turn the gas down a bit. I should have that on medium rather than on high. Let's get the rest of these ingredients in there. I also threw in some capers, which you... I, I didn't film that bit, don't know why. In with some tomato, swill out the can. Just break, break them up a little bit, but I, uh, I wanted this to say remain reasonably chunky. So it's like a veg, part vegetable, part sauce accompaniment. Half a bottle of my lady's favourite white wine went in. Nestle in the lab. We're going to stick the lid on that and then we're going to forget about that in the oven for three hours. Three hours later. You've been out for your one walk a day. Hope everyone's just having a one. Obviously, you don't want the police you know, getting in trouble. People looking out their windows and judging you. <laughs> and you can see how tender that lamb is. That knife just, just went through it like it almost wasn't there. Oh yeah, yum. That bit's for me. Now I've put that away in my fridge to the next day, but obviously you could just serve this immediately. You could try to carve it up. It'll break up as you try to carve it, but it doesn't really matter. But this is, I'm going to try to sort of show you a way of doing this a bit more restaurant style. So I've got a tray lined with some tin foil, a bit of olive oil on it. And it's now completely chilled, a bit of lamb. So it's gotten really firm. High, high fat content meat obviously does. It gets really hard when it when it's cold. So get this string off. Hopefully you got all of it. You can see behind me my very first attempt at sourdough. That's what I needed my my uh, Dutch oven for, but it wasn't the best. So I'll be doing another video hopefully soon, and it'll work. And here we go. You can see those lovely slices. Of, you know, quite thick pieces. You can still see the line of fat in there. And this is the point, see now, get them on the tray, whack them in an oven until they look all lovely and and caramelised, gorgeous, absolutely lovely. And you can just see how tender it is. Another bit for me. It's good this cooking, like, isn't it? You get to have everything. So finishing off the sauce, some fresh parsley, because I just love parsley. I think it makes everything just, oh, just that bit nicer. Just and taste. What I should have done was I think add a bit, maybe a lemon in at that stage. You know, juice of a lemon or half a lemon to sort of cut through the greasiness a little bit. But I also made some salsa verde, which I didn't film. So in the bowl, if you cling film a spoon like that, it makes it much easier to make mashed potato look nice and sexy. And then you can nestle a couple of pieces of this lamb belly right next to it. Anyway, that's it. That's my breast of lamb. Back over to me. One last accompaniment. I made a bit of salsa verde, which goes really beautifully with lamb. So I'm just going to put a little dollop of that on top. Right. First of all, the smell. The smell is absolutely amazing. Let's have a go. So the lamb really is the start of the show. It is really tender. The sauce, the braising, is kind of like an accompaniment as well. It's a vegetable and a sauce in one. 
it's really good. If you're a fan of lamb, you'll love this. Obviously, people that don't know lamb, you know, it tends to be greasy. That's why the acidity of something like salsa verde and the wine in this is quite necessary. Mm. The buttery mash is, you know, just because it's lush. That's absolutely gorgeous, really pleased with it. So if you want to give lamb, breast of lamb a go, try this way of doing it. It's fail safe. You can cook it the day before. You can cook it two, three days before. It doesn't really matter. It will keep. And um, just get it so soft as well. It's absolutely beautiful. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll come back to cookery lessons. See you in the next one coming really soon. Bye.